fashion industry broadcast and Style Planet TV are proud to bring you their new Netflix original series, The Girl's Guides to the World of Designer Fashion. This new six-part series explores the seductive world of designer fashion. Series one, the history of lingerie. Series two, the legend of the designer bag. Series three, the mystery of the high heel. Series four, American fashion. Series five, Italian fashion and series six, Paris fashion. Fearless, unapologetic, exuberant. Roberto Cavalli is the Italian fashion powerhouse who epitomizes the ultra-glamorous, jet-setting lifestyle of the stars. His innovative and revolutionary designs have made him a darling of the red carpet, coveted by bold, sexy women the world over. While his unparalleled love of silk, leather and adornments have shaped him as an icon in the world of luxury fashion. Whilst his designs are dazzling, sensuous and flamboyant, the man behind the brand is larger than life still. But when we told, uh, when we told the Brazilian girls, oh, we see, go see Roberto Cavalli, they was like literally start screaming in the, in the, really? uh, in the offices. Yeah, okay. I mean... Uh, well, your guy, let uh, me know. Uh, uh, <laughs> invite me, invite me. I come to Brazil. Oh, okay. I miss you. Uh, I hope you have that on the camera. <laughs> so... Cavalli is famous for melding the personal with the professional and the man with the brand. His decadent lifestyle pictures endless summers on maxi yachts, fast cars, private planes, champagne fountains and gold encrusted everything. It carries over to the brand, which millions flock to for a taste of that luxe, over-the-top lifestyle. Of course, the image would not be complete without a celebrity or two, and Cavalli's relationship with A-listers from the entertainment world is mythic. It's not summer without paparazzi shots of Cavalli entertaining various celebs from the Beckhams to Mariah Carey on his 140-foot yacht. Moored in the glittering marinas of Cannes and Saint-Tropez, Cavalli's designs are erotic, bold, confident, and his philosophy extends well beyond fashion. In this designer guide, we focus in on the European designer and discover how he came to be one of the most influential fashion forces on the planet. I started from simple, simple, simple family from Florence. Honestly, I did, we didn't have money also to send me to school. I didn't have so much school. I create everything with my hand, my art. And that was... Uh, I was a, 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 a Florentine boy that was growing in the, in the suburb of Florence. I would like to show you, or introduce you, a little bit my family. She's my mommy, the biggest woman of my life. She painted one self-portrait, and uh, with her cigarette, she used to smoke five cigarettes a day for all her life, <laughs> you know? She was my god. Born November 15, 1940, to a family of famous Florentine artists and tailors, Roberto Cavalli was perhaps always destined for greatness. His father perished in the Second World War, leaving him in the care of his mother Marcella, who was a seamstress by trade, and the influence of his maternal grandfather Giuseppe Rossi, whose work is displayed in the Uffizi Gallery in Florence. I'm not, I am a fashion designer. But more than to be in fashion design, I want to be one artist of fashion. Artist of fashion. I study art. I breed art in Florence, as I told you. I study art. I should be painter. I start my life paint, 
in the street, a t-shirt, something like that. I didn't know anything about shape. I learn everything by myself. I know this school, I create. Rossi was a member of the revolutionary Tuscan art movement, Maggioli, which predated Parisian Impressionism by over a decade. The movement was avant-garde for its day and widely misunderstood for taking painting outdoors and using the concept of light and shadow, or marchi, meaning patches or spots, as the basis of a more naturalistic aesthetic. This concept was to influence much of what Cavalli did with textiles and prints decades later. As Cavalli mused in an interview with Vogue magazine, my dream, maybe because of my family, was to be a painter. I chose in one moment the direction of textiles. From textiles, I went into fashion. Joining the Academy of Art in Florence in the late 1950s, Cavalli's potential was apparent from an early stage. He first drew attention to himself with his artistic use of applying paint to textiles in a new and inventive way. His series of flower prints on knits caught the eye of major Italian hosiery companies. From there, he continued to cultivate the new ideas that would see him stand out as a pioneer in the fashion world. It's just by accident, one day after my school, I started to print, to paint, sorry, to paint on some t-shirt that a friend of mine that she was designing for a small factory in Florence gave me to paint and it was successful. I remember that my first t-shirt was very nice. When I was 20 years old, I, I, I grew in the streets. My father died in the war when I was two years old. I grew in the streets. I fell in love with one girl, beautiful, 20, my first wife, 20 years old. And uh, I was too bad at that because the father of her, she, he didn't want me. That man that he painted in the street. No, <laughs> please, brother. And with the first morning, I married her. That is, it was really my life. And from there, I started to grow, grow, grow. I wanted to become, I wanted to show that I was able to become something, somebody. That is my power. Whilst simultaneously raising two children with his first wife, Silvanella Bianoni, in Florence, Cavalli began to hit his stride in the late 1960s. Reworking glove skin from a French tannery, he invented a new groundbreaking method of printing on leather and creating patchworks of different materials called intarsia, which echoed the machi of his artist grandfather. In 1970, Cavalli made his revolutionary runway debut at the Salon for pret porte in Paris, featuring swimsuits and dyed leather evening gowns, including a standout number in pink. The collection marked a turning point for Cavalli. His flamboyant Italian style caught on, and having patented his leather print technique, design houses including Hermes and Pierre Carden began to pay commissions to use his printing system for some of their signature branded leather products. Cavalli continued to rise to prominence, and a short two years later, pioneered again by opening his first boutique in the small fishing village of Saint-Tropez, correctly speculating it would become a future fashion hotspot and visited by celebrities the world over. Hello, Fashion TV. I have the honor to present you, Eva Cavalli. How are you tonight? I'm very well. I'm very happy to be here in this amazing place, Tel Aviv. It's really beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> to Tel Aviv. Yes. Hi, yes. Canada. Yes. Yes. Where, where, where are you? How are you? Welcome to Israel. Thank you. To the Arab. I now understand why you are so beautiful. Because uh, Michelle Adam chose all the time the most beautiful girls to make it. I should, uh, I should know. You know I'm Mexican. But I don't care. I but don't you, care you from, understand. From, I don't people. care from where you are. I care that you are beautiful. Okay, thank okay. you so much. Congratulations, Michelle. Okay, I'm sorry that I disturbed your interview. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Fashion TV, I love you. <laughs> By 1997, Cavalli was in the fashion elite, dressing and partying with the stars. He was a judge for the Miss Universe pageant that he met Austrian contestant Even Duringer, who in 1980 became his second wife. The partnership has lasted 40 years 
brought three more children to the Cavalli family, and it has marked a period of expansion, with boutiques in Venice and St. Bart's in the French Caribbean. With his clothing line now available worldwide, Cavalli also launched RC menswear during this time. And as much as Cavalli was now considered a hot commodity in the fashion world, the early 1980s was a tough time for his brand. It was an age of Japanese deconstructionism, which dominated the world's eye and the fashion runway, as Cavalli explains. But that fashion was fantastic. Opposite from my fashion. Completely black, completely grey, completely brown. Mean that that was not minimalism. That was one fashion made from people that was, for me, they was like architect of fashion. The inherently loud and glamorous Cavalli aesthetic could not compete against the dominant trend and sales from his range dropped. California in 1873, miners needed tough pants to withstand the wear and tear of the mine. A Bavarian dry goods salesman named Levi Strauss and a tailor named Jacob Davis were granted a patent to put rivets on pants at points of strain. It was a simple idea for a simple product, the American blue jean. In the 50s, uh, younger people started to wear jeans and they didn't like the idea of looking like their dads. Jeans became a signifier of the rebellious teen, popularized by James Dean in Rebel Without a Cause and Marlon Brando in The Wild One. But by 1988, Cavalli was back in the headlines, back in terms of invention and design. This time it would become synonymous with a new fashion staple that would endure each passing season. His new palette, <laughs> denim. It's fair to say that Cavalli revolutionized denim not just in terms of printing techniques, not just by inventing the first sandblast jeans collections, but by giving denim a luxurious overhaul and a brand new silhouette. The world saw him in his truest form, a pioneer of fashion. His exploration into denim culminated in a groundbreaking collaboration with Lycra, and in 1995, gifted the world the first stretch jean. A wardrobe essential, stretch jeans exploded onto the fashion stage, and their popularity has never dwindled. Denim changed forever, now the market entirely drenched in Cavalli's visions. Because denim, that, you know what it means denim for me? For me denim means freedom. And that is the reason that denim is very success in my life. With patents that could see him many times over, many could be forgiven for not buying a small island or simply living off the proceeds but not Cavalli. Dubbed the king of excess, his vision was only partially realized and his fashion house was to go astral in the new millennium, beginning in 2000 with Just Cavalli, a more ready-to-wear, youth-centric sportswear line. Just Cavalli has expanded to include menswear, womenswear, beachwear, underwear, eyewear, watches, jewelry, perfumes, and other accessories. Then there's also Angels and Devils, a children's collection, footwear, nightclubs, event spaces and bespoke cafe stores in Florence, Torre Branca and Via della Spiga that sport his signature empress, red tones and zebra prints. And, you know, and now all the Florentine love very much as they come here to, to eat, to drink, it's always cool, they love me now. Okay, sure. His dream was to expand the cafe stores to New York and all across the USA. New York is like a drug. They give you, oh my God, such energy. But after, I need Florence. Yet at heart, Cavalli is still very much a Florentine, and his family continues to be based there in a hilltop home that hosts celebrity galas as extravagant as his clothes. He and his wife also breed thoroughbred horses, own vineyards in Chianti, and oversee an Italian chocolate factory. Cavalli flies his own helicopter and speedboat fitted out with his signature zebra print cushions. 
as well as driving three Ferraris, each with their own set of customized luggage. Yet in person, he retains the look of the 1970s era. Rake with his fitted jeans and button shirt and flowing silver mane of hair. Throughout Cavalli's branding innovations and ventures, the secret to his success is not only his ideas and his eye, but more viscerally, the understanding of what women want. Really, I started my career because, uh, because I love a woman. I don't know, a woman gave me wonderful feeling. I admire my, my the femininity. That is most important. From that kind of point, I start to feel this, how how should be a woman close to me? And that is very important for me. And I start to understand that every woman, what she needs, what she likes, the feeling. He arrived here in my show, forget what you said before, because I want to be different. I want that you look special. I want that you look cavalry special, because I love a woman. Every woman should be as I like, and you know, to dream. I have two words, sexy, special, and beautiful. A facet of the Cavalli legend is well-documented passion for women and the creation of the Cavalli woman. A definition of perfect woman, I tell you, first I don't like the perfect woman. <laughs> Every woman never should be perfect because, you know, if one woman is perfect, it's boring. I believe that the woman should show her personality. His first female celebrity ambassador, often credited with putting the brand on the international fashion map, was Bridget Bardot. Numerous powerful and sexy women have followed in her footsteps, the likes of Kate Moss, Giselle Bunchen, Sharon Stone, and Jennifer Lopez. A self-proclaimed feminist, Cavalli is not shy where he draws his inspiration and his admiration for women, declaring to CNN that Maybe I'm the only man in the world who says that the woman is stronger than the man. The woman has more personality than the man, really. Because, uh, you know, the woman is my muse. Elaborating on the subject of muses, he tells the interview, My muse has always been the sexy, glamorous, sophisticated woman who exudes confidence. If anything, the Cavalli woman has become more free-spirited. She is still sexy, but she has more of a bohemian element to her. There's an unparalleled energy that rushes from Cavalli's fingertips and is stitched onto the label of his collections, bringing an upbeat glamour to modern fashion. It comes as no surprise that the biggest music stars on the planet flock to the genius of Roberto Cavalli to design costumes that flaunt their effervescence. Stars like Christina Aguilera, Jennifer Lopez, Chiara and Nicki Minaj have all been the centerpiece of Cavalli's mastery. But it was 2007 that he exploded onto the music stage with his captivating and euphoric designs for the Spice Girls reunion tour. We love each other. I appreciate what they are doing. They remind me a little bit of Cavalli's life. Two successes, the second one bigger than the first one. That is my life. I love Victoria, I love all of them. I love the show that uh, they they done. I saw two times in London. I propose you to go to see because it's fantastic. I love it. When asked about designing for one of the biggest female supergroups of all time, he explained, when I met them, I immediately understood the reason why the world went crazy, the unique brand of girl power. They are an irresistible mix of energy, pure joy, humor, and a spicy dash of glamour. Iconic, unique, and irreverently Cavalli, the five larger-than-life women unveiled sensuous, radiant, and scintillating tuxedos, jumpsuits, mini skirts, and silver space-age costumes that Lucre magazine identified as being the hottest trends of the year. So what are your, who's got a favorite dress for the tour or for now? I love leopard print. So, this yeah, is my guy. I agree, I agree with you. I agree with I'm you. obsessed. You look fantastic. I think in, in, in the cabaret section, there, I've got a vintage Cavalli uh, beaded dress, and it's from your vintage collection, and you could wear it on and off the stage, and it really works. Yeah. I think they've done amazing. Yeah, actually, yeah. The, the dress Thank that you. I wear for one of the songs actually is a vintage um, one of is Roberto's. The, the, the black one, it has a Mr. Pearl corset inside it as well. So the collaboration between Mr. Pearl and Roberto is fantastic. 
So um, I, want to ask, to I want to ask you all, what are the best things about Roberto Cavalli? Sexy, pretty, feminine, what's the what's the big word? You just said it all yes. in one. Yes, <laughs> I think you know, I've got it right now. I think, you know, and, and to dress five very different women, do you know what I mean? We all, and we all love, love our outfits, so I yeah. think that's Which amazing. Five different, different character, yeah. exactly. personality, but I love it. They exuded a confidence and glamour that only Cavalli could capture. His love of designing for women and the love of wearing his designs culminated in 2010, when the luxury brand Status Index listed Cavalli as the number one women's fashion label. Women around the world continued to be obsessed with his exuberance and extravagance. To create something new, new every time, when I start to create one collection, especially when I start to think about a fashion show, I have to start to think uh, what a beautiful woman expects from me. I say, oh my God, what they want to be special, to be sexy, to be sexual, to be glamour. That kind of things make me a big emotion. They make my adrenaline strong, boiling. When I come here, oh my God. When I think uh, who I am, when I think who I was, so, such a difference. I grow from, I born from a very, very simple family. And uh, I do a lot. I am quite uh, happy. I am proud. I don't love myself, but I admire myself. From revolutionizing leather and denim to reimagining nature, Cavalli, like his grandfather, states he finds inspiration from the natural world. In 2004, he sponsored Wild Fashion Untamed. Fashion exhibition at New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art that showcased an obsession with animal patterns and skins. Thereafter, a look which his brand became synonymous. His recent collections embrace the nature in all its glory. Wild, bewitching, adventurous. This is the Cavalli attitude paraded in his dazzling runway collections and ready to wear lines that intertwine the purity of God's canvas with the seduction of his unique aesthetic. When asked about the surge in animal prints in recent years, Cavalli explains, I started to appreciate that even fish have a fantastic colored dress. So does the snake and the tiger. I started to understand that God is really the best designer. So I started to copy God. Cavalli and the natural world are both exotic, untamable and beautiful. It is fitting symbolism that a brand aesthetic that is equally fierce and pure in spirit. The Cavalli name deliberately strays from the conventionality and is always looking to be bolder and more exhilarating. His legacy was embroidered in fashion, but keeps asking for more, more sophistication, more elegance, more adventure. He breathes excellence, but he wants the world to drink it too. Enter Cavalli Vodka, which he launched in 2005, and the very first super premium vodka to be made entirely in Italy. The liquor is a masterpiece of flavour, silky and seductive, just like his designs. And it's presented in a striking snakeskin bottle titled Fashion on the Rocks. Cavalli Vodka won the gold medal at the 2006 San Francisco World Spirit Competition and the 2006 International Review of Spirits. Deemed liquid gold, Cavalli states, I love the pureness of vodka, especially of my vodka. It is like water and fire coming together in a single element. Cavalli's creations exude a pure femininity with a taste of enthusiasm and appeal, whether wrapped around a strong Cavalli woman or poured into a crystal highball glass. They speak volumes for the fearless man that continues to be a cutting edge tour de force even after 50 years in the fashion industry. During his illustrious career, he has launched a wine range his own restaurant chain and members clubs. Throughout, his mantra rings true. Fashion that is not crazy is not fashion. 
Vali is a man truly driven by his desire for change, regardless of the form of his designs. Because I'm also unique, 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 honestly, unique. Do you know why unique? And that is the reason that I came to you. You have to be unique for yourself, for all, for yourself, all of you. You have to be unique, unique, me. You have to say to yourself, you have to say, I am the best. I do what I want because I have the power to do what I want. Alongside his bold designs and entrepreneurial projects, Cavalli doesn't shy away from causing a bit of a stir with controversial acts and statements, causing him to bump heads with some of fashion's elite. In the realm of head scratches, Cavalli once claimed to Vogue UK that he was the only straight man in fashion and that his sexual orientation made him a better designer. This boldness extends to critiquing American fashion and daring to go up against head fashion tastemaker, Vogue editor-in-chief Anna Wintour, as he tells to Italian magazine De La Repubblica. American fashion is terrible. You almost can't even look at it. But it has been driven by a great journalist, Anna Wintour. Who wants women to all be like her and dress the way she does? Like Karl Lagerfeld and other notoriously loose-lipped fashion designers, Cavalli does occasionally manage to throw a compliment in with his barbs. Not finished on the subject of American fashion, Cavalli unloaded on Michael Kors in a mini rant to Style.com, accusing the later of copying his designs. As he states, He, Kors, is one of the biggest copying designers in the world. I just want to tell him to stop copying me. Stop! He's not American fashion. He's an international fashion made in America. It's a fair bet we can look for more from unfiltered thoughts coming away courtesy Monsieur Cavalli in the future. My personal action to be free, the freedom for me is the most important action because today is some time we are not free to think in many countries as well. And you know, the luxury for me is not just the beauty, the money that you spent, but for me the most important luxury that every person should have is freedom. Although it was reported in April of 2008 that Cavalli was looking for buyers of the business, no one was game enough to take on the Cavalli empire. Cavalli unofficially retired in 2015, selling 90% of his business to the private equity firm Vesidra for an undisclosed amount, thought to be around $430 million US. Peter Dundas was selected as his natural successor as head designer of the label, a move that did not come a moment too soon. Flagging revenue forced the sale of the brand's Rue saint Honore store and called for a reboot of the label. Some of the blame for the downturn could be attributed to the global decline in the luxury fashion sector, but must also be placed at the feet of Cavalli, as consumers developed a weariness for Cavalli's flashy and overtly sexy high heels and leopard print style. At the time, Dundas's disco-flecked vision promised a more contemporary take on the Cavalli glamour aesthetic. Broadening the label's appeal to a younger and cooler demographic was part of a deliberate strategy to increase its global reach and gain a more stable footing in a changing and difficult market. Hence the Cavalli woman relocated from the European yacht to the backstages of Coachella and Tomorrowland. Dundas's collections were received with mixed results. His leadership of Cavalli lasted just over 18 months and he departed the fashion house in 2016. The brand went even more primal under Paul Surridge, but he too did not last. What followed in 2019 was a rudderless period for the brand, amidst rumours of bankruptcy. However, with the social media revolution, influences, and the meteoric rise of online shopping, Cavalli is having a resurgence and is ever-present at Fashion Week, the latest being a line launched at Milan called Skins, the installation in the city's Mudec Museum features 60s-inspired animal print mashups on tissue-thin dresses, short suits, blazers and embossed suits, all with block-heeled lace-up boots. It's modern, lust-filled and wearable day or night, with that touch of over-the-top which remains Cavalli's signature. I think that all my life was a big adventure, the beginning too, because
because I study art. I make the school of art in Florence and after the academy. I never, never really I was think to be designer. I was never think to become designer. Cavalli has done it all, from launching his menswear and youth lines to leading his way in womenswear and denim. He even had the boast of designing a limited edition animal print Diet Coke bottle, and as they say in Italy, Coca Light. As he sits atop a multi industry empire with an estimated worth of over $1 billion, we are left thinking what's next for Cavalli? And at the ripe old age of 80, he has no intention of slowing down. Fashion and aesthetics are a part of his DNA, intrinsic to his being. We'll be watching intently to see what the future holds for this unapologetic octogenarian. But in honest Cavalli style... Missing the party? How can I miss the party? I am the party.